Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a pattern that is reminiscent of some upmarket floor tiles in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to do. I'm going to show you how you can create a pattern swatch that looks like this, which allows you to create a repeating pattern that is somewhat reminiscent of the floor tiles that you might find in the entryway of a Victorian building. So let's get started and to do so we're going to choose File and then New and create a new document and it can be any size that you like but I prefer to be working with a square document because then I can show you all the other bits and pieces on the screen fairly easily. Let's just resize this down and to center the artboard in the screen I'm going to press Control or Command Zero. Really handy tool to understand and know. Now we're going to start by drawing a square and for this we're going to use the rectangle tool here and I'm just going to use the default swatches. If you need to get back to the default swatches, press the letter D. And I'm going to click and drag a square and I do that by holding the shift key as I draw and this shape is then constrained to a square. I'm going to click away from this because that's my basic tile and now I need the tile element that goes in the corner. And for this I'm going to reverse these so that black is my fill colour and I'm just going to take off the stroke, I don't want any stroke at all. And again I'm going to create a rectangle. Now you can do this one of two ways, you can choose the rectangle tool or you could use a slightly rounded rectangle if you prefer. I'm just going to use the rectangle and again holding shift I'm going to draw out a square that is a, the size that I want that corner tile to be. So once it's created I'm just going to click away from from it, press the selection tool, click away from it and now I can select and move it. It needs to be rotated 45 degrees and the simplest way to do this is just to position your mouse pointer just outside one of the corners here and hold shift as you drag because that constrains it so that you automatically get a 45 degree rotation. And now we're just going to drag and drop this into position so that it intersects over the top corner of the square. And we'll see that because these little smart guides are telling us that we're actually intersecting the center points of these two objects. So this is our basic tile. And if it needs any adjustment in size at this stage, do that before you go. And for this one I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. So I'm dragging in from this bottom corner, again holding shift so that I'm constrained to a square. So this is going to be my tile. Now it's going to be a lot easier for me to work on it if I do it off the edge of the artboard. So I'm just going to grab these two objects, I'm just dragging them off the artboard because that allows me to see the difference between the white and the black. And at this point I may also increase my strokes. I've got my white square selected. I'm just going to take the stroke up to two points so that we have a reasonably good edge on this shape going to select both of these shapes and now we're going to create the pattern and we do that with Object, Pattern, Make and I'll click OK and a new pattern has been added to the swatches panel. Now it's not quite right right now because the pattern tiles are not overlapping. We've actually got a border around them. Well that's really easy to solve. We're just going to decrease the width and the height and because this is a square pattern essentially we can do that with these locked for now. The other thing that might be handy here is that I've got my dim copy set to 60% and what that is is that the copies of this pattern repeat are dimmed to 60% opacity. It's making it a little bit unclear as to what this pattern really looks like. So let's turn off dim copies and now we're seeing the pattern at its full opacity. It's going to make it a little bit easier to work with this. The copies 5x5 five five setting is purely for your own purposes. It just is giving you this visual. It's not changing the pattern tile so you can select anything you like from here. But we're just going to click in here and start bringing this value down and I'm doing that by holding the down arrow on the keyboard. So I'm just pressing that repeatedly until I run these shapes into each other. And I'm looking to keep that two point boundary around my tiles. So this is pretty good. The only problem is we're not seeing the correct overlap. The reason for that is that the tiles are overlapping the wrong way. At the moment the top is in front. Let's click and make the bottom in front. 
and that brings the tile so that the pattern looks correct. If the pattern doesn't look correct in this view, don't save it because you need to do work on it. It's not going to get any better if you save it. But right now my pattern's looking fine, so I'm just going to click Done. And that adds the pattern to the pattern swatch. I can delete that at this point, this pattern piece I don't need any longer, but I'm just going to leave it there for now. Let's just go and see the artboard. I did that by pressing Control and 0. Now I'm going to create a rectangle that is the shape of my artboard, and I could do that by just dragging out a rectangle, but I have a script that does that, which saves me a whole lot of work. So if you're interested in the script that does this, look out for my video tutorial on scripting in Illustrator, and that has details about scripting and this rectangle, the artboard size script, which is just awesome. It gives me a path that is the size of the artboard, it's already in place. So I'm just going to target its fill color here, make sure that I have it selected and click on my new pattern swatch. And that fills the shape with the pattern. You might see some lines through this pattern and these are just Illustrator and the monitor not being able to keep up with each other in terms of rendering the detail pattern. This is not going to be in the pattern itself and we can prove that by just zooming in here. And if as we zoom in we lose that line, which we do at this point, you can see that the line comes and goes. The reason for that is the monitor, not the pattern itself. If the lines were still visible as you viewed these at a higher magnification, then you will have a problem. But right now, we don't have a problem beyond that, that Illustrator and the screen are not working particularly well together. If we want to change the size of this pattern, we can do so. I'm going to select my path, that rectangle that's the size of the artboard, and choose Object, Transform Scale. Now at the moment we're transforming the object and the pattern and everything's reduced to 50%. I don't want to transform the object, so I'm just going to disable that. I just want my pattern to be smaller. And let's take this up to 75%. So we've reduced the size of our pattern. This is what it was originally, this is what it is now, and the container that it's in, this rectangular size of the artboard has not changed in size. Let's click OK. Now the last thing I may want to do with this particular pattern before I leave is to actually move it. It's not really square center in this shape, so let's see how we would move it. Again, with my rectangle the size of the artboard selected, I'm going to choose Object, Transform, Move. And again, I don't want to transform the object. I don't want to move this rectangle. I do want to remove my pattern, so I'm going to make sure that Transform Patterns is selected and Preview is selected. And now I'm just going to adjust the horizontal and vertical values to approximately center the pattern within this shape. And when I'm happy with the way it's looking, I'll just click OK. That's a handy way of moving a pattern within a shape. So there you have a way of creating a sort of vintage floor tile pattern in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.